Hey, we're back again, this time with a Diamond 2 Ana Muega Bop. I think it's probably going to be Ana. We'll see. So here I think that I had a reasonable positioning, but get carried away with being aggressive and get caught by the Echo first. Then next fight I was trying to play more with the tanks, but I felt like he was very indecisive, so I got caught again. How can I improve this? From 4 to 2 until 5.25. Let's watch this. Um, username in game is Angel of Grace. Let's see. Good call by the Echo first. Next fight, I'm trying to play more with the tank. Okay, that's the first fight, I would say. I go out on my turn. Yes. Enemy turret destroyed. No worries, friendly. We cool, we cool. No worries, just a small misunderstanding. It's okay. Okay. Let's go step by step. So, first things first. The Echo is really oppressive. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not about the Echo being oppressive. It's about staying in the same spot and waiting for stuff to happen to you rather than you doing stuff to the enemies. It's about the enemy Echo having the audacity to shoot me. So uh, let me lower down the game volume a little bit. Let's check this out. About the APM again. Yeah, exactly as we had in the previous vote review. So this position over here, up until over here, it's good. I love the nade, I love the pick, boom. Perfect. But right now, this way the disconnect happens. Because right now, it seems that you pulled out a chair, you're staying on the beach, and you're just chilling, checking Instagram or Twitter or something. Look, I'm going to play this from your point of view from over here. This is you this entire time. You're just chilling over here, waiting, and then you die. Boom. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. If you plus one, you walk in front and you try to get covered. What do I always stress? Find the wall, kiss the wall, become best friends with the wall. Okay? So, you plus one, you have to look to get press W, which you kind of do, but get in cover. So, let's watch this a little bit again. I get a kill. Okay. I want to be aggressive. If I go over here, it's a little bit too aggressive. I can just rotate over here left side and play from here or even from here and I have cover. I can also go over here if I want to be more aggressive. I see the enemies, I have cover. If I stay here, then the enemies don't feel that much pressure. What do the enemies feel? The enemies shoot the Reinhardt. They can maybe shoot the Moira and that's it. That's where their focus is. But if you're over here, you're another threat. Do we shoot Rein? Do we shoot Tana? Do we shoot Moira? So you chilling over here afterwards is not that much pressure applied. I said to watch the entire part of it because over here you had the right intention. Right? You stand still a little bit and then just rotate. Move. No reason to stay unscoped, to stay scoped in. Another mechanic, some deathmatch to learn how to quick scope. Boom. Because over here you probably I, I don't know what exactly you're thinking. You probably were waiting a little bit to look for a nade, another aggressive nade. But it's a little bit too aggressive around the corner, you know? Because, like, Echo comes in and you just get surprised. You could have turned this around. You could have unscoped shot, nade. You could have went with a sleep dart. You could have turned this around definitely. But you weren't expecting her, right? You weren't expecting her to be this aggressive. So. When stuff like this happens, when you plus one, get in cover, don't play in the open. Even if you want to look for an aggressive opportunity. Like, if you're in the open, you're ready to follow up with a nade. You're ready to follow up with a sleep guard. You always expect danger, 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 literally everywhere. Because right here, you don't move. Like, she walks to you, and then you freeze. Freeze. Look there. Freeze. Freeze. Now, imagine if you would have walked like this a little bit, throw the nade. She would have died. Moira was here. You would have survived. Moira was also probably going to heal you or do damage to Echo. Boom. 
dead. That's it. Move, move, move. Overwatch is one of those games in which you just can't stand still. You have to move, move, move. So again, to summarize the first team fight, uh, over here, amazing plays in the first part, but after that, you can't relax. You cannot relax. You reposition, cover, move, move, cover, shoot, shoot. Let's watch the team fight from over here afterwards. Shoot, shoot, shoot. They use bubbles. Maybe I throw a sleep dart. Shoot, shoot. I cap the point right now. I maybe land the nade. Maybe I fight the echo on the right side. All good. Rather than staying here and giving the enemies what they want. And now the second part of the team fight, the same thing happens. I go out on my turn. The second part of the key moment. You get here. Good sleep dark dag. Genji gets stuck. This is on you by the way. I know that Genji gets stuck and stuff, but you hear the stickies attached, you see damage coming in, splash the nade. Echo does a lot of damage with these, but she also does like impact damage. Right? You could have healed him up over here. He would have been full HP, would have not died from that because he wasn't like damage boosted or none on, and he wasn't discorded either. But it's okay, sometimes stuff like that happens, but still, see, same thing over here, like, you're in the open a little bit. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. You try to walk in, still in the open. Good nade. And then Echo just walks in, and you're not moving that much, and then they die. Okay, I will fix your problem very fast. I'll fix your problem very, very fast. Okay, nice and slow. You need this game mode to practice, and you're gonna see that your gameplay will improve very fast. Go in Create, go in Settings, Import Game Code, A9B2N. Okay, click on Escape, click on Start, pick Anna. Put on your favorite song. Pick Diva. And move and do unscope shots. But move. Do not move predictably like this. Rotate as much as you can like Vaggy. Do not move left and right. Move in front, a little bit in the back. As confusing as you can. Literally as confusing as you can. Not to move in the same pattern. This is how your gameplay should look. Add a crouch from here and there. Don't add jumps that much though. And you can aim in any way you want. If your gameplay looks like this. This is too slow. You can do on scope shots. You can do quick scopes. Maybe stand still and do a scope shot. And then swap back to on scopes. But always move. And with time, you're gonna see that you're gonna become better and better. You're gonna keep a longer distance and you can practice this as well. Do this a couple of minutes every time you play and you're gonna learn a lot. Cause like, I know this is how you play. This all has to do with APM. Okay. If you wanna swap a hero and try with other heroes, you press F in this and then you pick another hero. For example, you can also practice with Genji. Genji aiming like this, if you stay like this, this is not the right way of healing Genji up. This is very slow. You will, you're immovable, right? You do one scope shot and then you can move into one scope, one scope shots if you want. The only time where you should stay literally unscoped is when five enemies, uh, scoped and I mean, is when five enemies are shooting others. Because right over here I see that you stand still, try to aim, try to walk here, try to start with the mechanics. This mode will help you do will help you play like way better. Of course, you're not going to be able to do this non-stop ML7, shut the hell up, like, yeah, I, I can't do this, okay? I, I cannot do unscope shots, move cows, blah, 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 blah. Baby steps. It can start with stand still, do one scope, then shot, then move and do two scope shots. Then stand still, one scope shot, move two scope shots. Press F again, and you can try with other heroes as well. For example, I uh, the ball one is not that good, He it's bugged. Uh, Doomfist one is okay from what I remember also, but this is like what you have to do. You have to move non-stop. You can't stand still in the game. Uh, Faga one is also pretty decent. But the one that I also recommend is Lucio. Because you can look for damage and you can look for heal. And this is like another practice that you can do with flicking. Because I feel like sometimes in the middle of the fights, 
you're probably a little bit undecisive on what you should be doing. Yeah, you're looking for sleep darts, you're looking for grenades, you're looking to heal your allies, you're thinking about your positioning. Let's make this simple. Once you heal up your Lucio, once he's healed up, you flick your aim to a DPS, to, to an enemy. So you heal them up, and then an enemy. And then you kill the enemy. And then you make uh, your Lucio full HP, and then shoot the enemy once. Make the other uh, enemy, uh, the other Lucio full HP, shoot the enemy once. One heal deck, one damage deck. One damage deck, one damage deck. One heal, one damage. 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 And you can also do like this. Boom, boom, boom. Do one scope shots, do how you want them to do. Do quick scopes. This game mode helps you do, helps you learn like how to prioritize things a little bit better, right? Like you, you can't, you can't stand still and then do the decision, you know, to commit. Uh, it teaches you to commit in this. But still, the name of the game is go against it when you're plus one and have continuous movement. You can also, I don't know if you said that you also practice Baptiste. You have to restart the lobby, I think, in order to select other heroes. I might be wrong. Yeah, after you start the lobby, you can practice the same thing with Baptiste too. Okay, let's move on to the second part of the Vorgi view. And I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Uh, can I get uh, a, a chat? Can I get Zildig in game, please, before I show you something? Or uh, somebody? I want I want to share something. Because I want you to not... Because this is like the main mistake that when we talk about movement, this is the main mistake that we suffer from. Is Zelda in game, or can you help me? We're gonna wait, and then we're gonna continue with the Vorgive you, okay? Because this is super important. Launching the game, okay. It's super important, because you're gonna be like, but Mystic Streamer, I do this. My APM is high, look at how fast I move my fingers. Look, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. No, 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 no. If you do this, you're very easy to kill. Or speedy, okay, okay, I'm getting speedy in. Uh, just move... Just move like this. Literally just move like this, Speedy. You know what? I'm also gonna get... Uh, I'm also gonna get Zeldig. Can you hop in game Zeldig too? I have long fingers. It helps. I mean, you can just get a, a smaller keyboard. If you can't press crouch. But by the way, a good cool trick of adding extra movement to you is to press crouch from time to time. Okay, so I want Speedy... Pick, uh, not Lucio, pick Soldier, for example. Pick Soldier and Cassidy. Pick Soldier and Cassidy. And now, Speedy, I want Speedy to just press the key like this. Like a lot. Right? Like very stuttered, I guess. And I want Zeldic to move a little bit wider when dodging. So Speedy, just spam it like this. So see, Speedy seems like he's harder to hit, right? Seems like he's harder to hit. But actually, he's not moving that much. Meanwhile, with Zeldig, if I track him like this, and if he creates like different patterns and moves to one side a little bit, adds a couch like this, Zeldig try to do this. Like, don't go bam, bam. Try to like change the direction. Like, move a little bit, that's it. This is very, look at this. How are you supposed to do this? You know what I mean? Versus that. Like, that works from time to time, but it can just, like, not even move the cursor. If you're very annoying, you, you have to... Oof. 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 Like, just swing a little bit. Because a lot of the times... Yeah, dude, move. I'm moving. I'm moving. Why am I dying? No, just wait a little bit more. Thank you for the help. Uh, let's get some roses for uh, Zelda and Speedy here. Helping me out. Let's go to the second key moment that he showed. Second key moment is at... Because this is how you get caught again, okay? You get caught because you're not moving. And you get caught because you're not getting yourself into cover after you plus one and you press W and you're in a better position. Doesn't have that much to do with your uh, ability usage, by the way. Your ability usage is okay. I like how you're playing it. Even though you can wait for things, I like how you're playing it. If you move a little bit more and you get in cover, you're going to see that you're not going to die that much. From 540 until 610. Here, I'm unsure what is best to try to do to save the tank and help him get out, or save myself to get out or die with the team. Was that out of position? Should I have been with the tank? 540 until 610. Let's see. 540 until 610. We're gonna argue. Angel of Grace. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Shh. 
Shut up, Emil. Contrary to popular belief, what some of you might be saying, I like I love these anti-sleep darts. You know that you're probably not gonna have to use it for a little bit later. You're gonna have it available. It's it's worth it to throw the sleep dart like this. Like I I really like how you're playing decision making wise. The thing that's holding you back a little bit is your mechanics, so fuck. You see? Same pattern. Exactly what we showed. See, oh. Oof. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, this is very easily corrected what we saw here. Apart from obviously the movement. <clears throat> Quick trick. If you have, if your allies have ultimates, you help them out, right? If you almost have your ult, you help yourself out. So, how you would, I suggest, approach this. Guys, we're regrouping. I'm 10 to Nano. I'm gonna take my sweet time, get Nano, and that's it. That's it. That's all I'm thinking. I'm just, I'm not looking for aggressive nades. I'm not putting myself in bad spots. I'm not doing stuff. The sleep that I can do it. I'm just gonna wait and farm Nano. Who can I farm Nano of the easiest? The tank. He dies, doesn't matter. I stay here, unscope shot, unscope shot, unscope shot, unscope shot, unscope shot. Let's walk, Nano Ryan, we win. Literally, walk Nano Ryan, we win. Why? Because it's only Zaga over here. And with Moira, they might use some ultimates. It's okay. It's the only move that I have in this case. Like, try to farm Nano and do it. It might not result in you winning the team fight per se, because they have huge ult economy. And this is maybe why you're trying to force something onto the left side, which I'm going to get to in a second, because this key moment is a little bit short. But your primary goal in this situation is, if you're close to ultimate, get the ultimate, use the ultimate. Nice, clean, and simple. Right? Because who knows? Maybe Zarya is going to throw the Graviton onto the Reinhardt. Maybe you're going to nade your Reinhardt to survive the Graviton damage. Because you have like two supports that can heal up a lot. And if you throw the nade on Reinhardt, then I don't think that Zarya with full charge will be able to melt through a pocketed Reinhardt with, with two supports. It gets complicated, TLDR. Okay? You, you might have you might have been thinking this. Right? You might have been thinking this. But the general idea, the bottom line is this. If you're 80% of your ultimate, you play safe, you get your gold, you use your gold. Don't try to try something else. Now, if you're decision, if you weren't aware of this, if you were aware of this, but you know that you can't do anything with nano boost, then you have to look for a pick, which is exactly what you're trying to do. Exactly what you're trying to do. Now, Moira's thing with Reinhardt is okay, because she's another support that can heal up a lot, same as LW sometimes, same as Baptiste. Same as even Kiriko. You can't do this if you'd play with a if your secondary support would be Zenyatta, Brig, or even Mercy, depending on what the enemies uh, have, right? You could do it with Mercy. With Lucia, you couldn't. So in this case, you go like, okay, I have to put my carry pants on. You look for a sleep dart. Soldier dies. You don't want a nano because you know that you're gonna lose this. Then create bad angles, create bad opportunities. And I'm going to make you a very simple. Uh, I'm gonna show you a very simple thing. Five enemies here, four enemies here. Enemies like plus one, they have ult advantage, and they have more HP and resources than you because they just look at their HP and they didn't use anything to kill the soldier rather than just shoot them. So they, these five will win against this four. It's kind of like, what, what do you have? You have a thousand people versus a hundred people, same weapon, same, who's gonna win? Like, duh. So what do you have to do is make an even dishonest fights, okay? You have to create another angle to split the team fight. So if your goal was to like maybe try to get nano, but try to look for a carry, rotate left side. What happens here, Mr. Streamer? What happens if I play from here? Then you have one, two, three, and you're playing from here. Echo might be feeling for you, but you can just run outside. Reinhardt, Moira, and Sojourn might be in a three versus three here or three versus two because everybody's looking at you. You might be looking for a cheeky nade from here to splash over here on the stacks over here. You might be baiting the enemies outside. The possibility of you winning the steam fight with the wolves that you have and the fact that Soldier got picked off is very low. You can play it safe and throw the nano in, which will help you understand better how ult economy is and if you should do it or not. And it's just a basic decision here, right? Because using nano and then they use graviton, maybe another ult and then another ult is not that bad rather than just dying and not forcing any ultimates because you didn't use nano. But creating different angles of attack is something that I feel you have the potential of doing because I see your decision making in this. You're looking for aggressive picks and then you're playing safe. So, view it like this. I want you to approach every team fight with corners, with spots. 
okay? I want you to approach every team fight with spots. I talked about this a lot. Green areas, orange areas, red areas. Green areas are areas where the enemies are going to... Uh, where you're mostly safe, but you're not, push, not putting a lot of pressure on the enemies. Uh, orange areas are contested areas that can go either way. Sorry for the flashbang. While red areas are areas that are incredibly high risk, requires a lot of skill, a lot of things to happen, and it might not result in you winning the fight or not, but they help you win a lot. So, let's cover this uh, to help you understand this a little bit better. To help me explain a little bit better as well, because maybe I'm not being that coherent with this. So, this entire area is green. This entire area is green. Why? Because if the enemies want to go for me, then I just walk back. I press S. Very simple. We control this. They control this. Now, this area over here, for example, this one's orange. Why? Because if the enemies want to go for me, then I can maybe uh, create another fight here. Let's say two versus one, so my team can be three versus three, but maybe I can get even more of their attention, and maybe Echo goes for me, maybe Zara throws the Graviton, maybe Moira fades to me, and then my team takes this position, then maybe we win. So like this orange area, like I'm playing from here, and then I want to go a little bit aggressive, right? Because you're playing usually at the edge of the green area. You walk in, and then you find cover. And now we can talk a little bit about the red areas, which is something that also I think that you can do because I see your decision making in this, you can go for risky, risky plays. So for example, this would be a red area. Flanking all the way behind them with the right timing would be a red area that would require a lot of experience. Even this over here would be a red area. You know, like inside. You go up the stairs, go inside, and try to look for an aid or a sleep dart over here. Even rotating all the way on high ground would be, I would say that would be an orange area. So why do I define them as green, orange, and red? If you're playing in green areas, you're mostly safe and you're not putting that much pressure into the enemies. If you're going in orange areas, then you are making the enemies make a decision. Do we go for the person here or do we win here? This usually works in all ratings. If you want to learn how to play the game fast, then you have to go more and more in red areas, which you see like a lot of very high ranked players play, and force bad engages. Because like over here, if they go for me, it's red because you're alone. It's red because you're alone. So if they go for you, they can't help you. But if they go for you here, your team is kind of in range to help you. This is why from this area over here would be a red area because the team can help you. Like, yeah, they can walk in and stuff, but if they react fast, they can't get to you. So you approach the fights and you think, where is risky? This wall is risky. I want to play this wall. Where is risky after we win the team fight? Over here is risky. The enemies are going from there. I play here. Where is risky? This is risky. Let's hope and see in game more examples like this. Uh, give me a second. Teaching Tuesday. Perfect. Can you see? Is this working? Yes, it is. We have two more minutes remaining. So let's go step by step. Because sometimes your team is better than them. If your team is better than them, then you don't have to pressure that much. You just have to play in green areas. You just help your teammates, and then you go in. But like in this situation where Soldier dies, you can either back out and the enemies are going to win the fight, or let's say you can rotate over here. Now imagine you're here. Imagine a nade here. Look how juicy it is. Then what happens? They chase you. They chase you. I go back. I go back. What happens here? Nobody can boop me. They'll use ultimates, and I just made them invest resources into me by just doing this. Maybe Reinhardt pins in. Maybe Moira finds somebody that has low HP. Maybe Sojin one shot somebody. But for the enemies, it's very easy. Because this is what the enemies see. I shoot here. Safe. While, do we go there or do we go there? This question marking of the enemies is what wins you a lot of games. So like every team fight, this is a clear example. Another team fight is, let's say you secure the point. Actually, let's go at the first key moment. Uh, that you shared, I think. Uh, where is it? First key moment. Uh, wait, it's on another map. Over here. Okay, let's go here. Boom. And now I'm thinking. Orange, 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 orange. This is green. This is green. This can be orange. This can be red a little bit. Orange, orange. I need a corner to do damage. This is orange. I'm. They can that damage to me. They can help me. But that's it. I move. I go here. I shoot from here. Because then Echo comes in and then you die. Let's watch from here. You throw the sleep dart. Okay, you have you can't always like split angles and stuff. You want to play with your team, you wait a little bit, Genji dies, boom. Now let's think. 
Wait, four versus five. We can wait a little bit. Mm, we can, what's the wool charge? 60, 60, you want to heal him up? Okay, uh, guy in walks in. You can walk in too. What do we think? We don't stay scope 10. We look for a sleep. Walk here. Play from here. Organ jug, yeah. Here. Look, this is green. See what I mean? This is a clear example of green. Does it make sense? Because over here, oh my god, maybe I land the nade on Mercy, maybe I get a kill. I can help my teammates, they can shoot me, but I also can get in cover. Imagine me here, throwing the nade. Okay, Cassidy dies, then I just back out. That's it. And this is how you can approach every team fight. Let's watch the next team fight. You wait a little bit, you walk in, go to sleep die, do you want to risk it? So the dies, wait, we'll review this one. One more fight. This might not look that good. Final second. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of doing this. You go. You throw the nano in. A little bit. Oh, that's a little bit too early. Doesn't matter. And now let's see how they open this. Good. Like, see, when you have the opportunity, when your team is in, you do this. You can apply pressure by yourself as well. Good nade. And then you again are playing safe. You're playing safe. You throw the nade. And you just see nine. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, let's go into Olaf review. God damn, Reinhardt, how could you? How could you? So, uh, let's go step by step. Two, two, let me just change this. One, one, do this, do that. Perfect. Let's make you move the caps lock. Okay. So, for you, because this is diamond, and I can definitely feel some patterns happening here and there. Your positioning is dictated, in this case, I would say, by your decision-making. Your decision-making is influenced by you wanting to play safe. Like, you look for an aggressive opportunity, and then you go back. The equivalent would be right now, you're kind of like a boxer that plays it very safe and sometimes goes for an aggress uh, aggressive. Aggressive punch, and then relaxes five minutes. And then an aggressive punch, and then relaxes five minutes. It's, it's about dancing. It's about a rhythm. You know, like, the more aggressive you can be without dying, without... Uh, suffering a lot of consequences, then the more results you're going to get. So, I'm actually going to break it like this. I think your cooldown management is good. You die just because of your uh, uh, positioning afterwards, which is, again, influenced by our decision-making. I suggest you work on the following things. I suggest you just do this. I suggest you do... You focus on your aiming and you focus on your decision-making. So... I recommend you do the following. Work on your APM, play that match, learn hero mechanics. This also applies to one on quick scope, but it also applies to like other heroes. But the aim training that I recommend for you to do faster, because you're in diamond, to improve. A9, B2, N, uh, game code. Do this 10, 15 minutes or in queue every day and you'll learn a lot really fast. So I recommend you do this. Another thing that Olaf recommends you do is find a wall, become friends with the wall, hug the wall, and you are, if you are plus one, rotate to an aggressive position. Literally, you have to be faster. That, that, that's all you gotta do. That, that's all you gotta do like this. You're in diamond, right? You're in, you, you, this is diamond? This is diamond. Yeah, it's a diamond 2-1 Masters 5 peak. This is good. This is good. I recommend you do the following. Me, personally. Not Olaf. Me, personally. I recommend you do this. Go in orange zones five times a game. So, like, the fight starts, and you actually have to think about going into orange zones rather than just playing in the back foot. If, how do you know if you're in orange zone or not? If you feel like the enemies can get to you, if they commit, then that's an orange zone. Enemies can get to you, and they can, uh, and the allies can play kind of close to you, right? So go in orange zones, go in orange zone five times a game. Number two, after a fight is won, think of and uh, ask these two questions: aggressive, cover, five times. Wait, can you actually see this? I think you can. Five times a game. Actually, ten, uh, five times a game for the next 10, 20 games. Just write them down. And this will develop very easy habits. 
I know that this this video doesn't seem that complicated. I'm not joking. This vote is not that complicated. Like I definitely see the potential. I see what you're trying to do. I didn't see a lot of ultimates being used. Oh yeah, another one actually, another one. And three, if you are close to ult, focus on building ult and using it rather than looking for plays outside your ult because ultimates are usually stronger than abilities so forehead these two are going to be the most important ones for you okay so if you learn how to move consistently and be faster increase your apm by again moving 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 i showed you examples in game with how how to dodge and stuff you will see that the game will feel more fluid you don't have to play the game non-stop. If you get tired after doing it after a couple of games, just take a break. Because I would say you might be experiencing uh, fatigue, right? You might be a little bit tired after a couple of games and consistently think about stuff like this. So, think of your gaming sessions as best of threes initially, then best of fives, then best of sevens, and so on. What I'm trying to say is this. You have time to play five games. These five games are a best of three series. That's it. It's like, imagine the next five games are in a tournament, right? If you win three games, then you can relax for the next two. But once the five games are done, if it's three to two, then you don't have to play at your maximum afterwards. Same for best of fives. It's gaming overall is all about, and in general, a lot of stuff. It's about being consistent and doing things consistently well. If you have one good game now, but the other good game is the seventh one, maybe you're not having, you're not thinking actively of like um, trying to play consistently. Because I know a lot of players that go like, oh, I had a good game on Widow on second girl, but then the next game I sucked on Junkertown. I can't, I got out sniped. So again, think view like this. I have time to play two hours. I want to play two games at my best. The first two games at my best. Then I can make mistakes. The next three games at my best. And eventually with time, you're going to add more and more and more and your resistance will build on. So again, to conclude, the two biggest ones, apart from uh, work on your APM with A9, B2, and game code, is go in orange zones five times a game if your team is losing. If you feel like you need more pressure, like you can do stuff to the enemies, they can do stuff to you, but you're also close to your allies. And also ask yourself, once the fight is won, like you get plus one or plus two, or just literally in the middle of the team fight, you can ask yourself. Aggressive? Yes. Cover? Yes. Okay, good. Aggressive? No. Am I aggressive by staying over here at this corner? No. Is this corner aggressive? Yes. Okay. Am I in cover here? No. Am I in cover here? No. Am I in cover here? Yes. Is this aggressive? No. Am I aggressive here? Yes. Am I in cover here? Yes. If both questions are yes, then you play from that spot and you're going to win so many more games. You're essentially detaching yourself from the game and viewing it objectively rather than subjectively and feeling the stress in game by asking yourself these questions. Okay, hope you found this vote to give you useful. If you climbed afterwards, after watching it, make sure to uh, drop a comment and let us know. And if you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe till the next vote give you. I will seven out.